Another example, example three. We are sketching f of x is equal to the modulus of x minus seven plus the modulus of x plus three. So I want to sketch this function. So how do you sketch it? The first thing is because it's a modulus function, we redefine the pieces of the modulus. So what is x minus seven outside the modulus? It is x minus seven. If x minus seven is greater or equal to zero, it is negative x minus seven if x minus seven is less than zero. Meaning it is x minus seven if x is greater or equal to seven, it is negative x plus seven if x is less than seven. So we have expanded the negative here to give us this structure here. We also go to x plus three as a piece and say, this is x plus three. If x plus three is greater or equal to zero, it is negative x plus three if x plus three is less than zero. Giving us x plus three, if x is greater or equal to negative three, negative x minus three, if x is less than negative three. Like that. So, these are pieces of f of x. We want the whole f of x. So we pick negative three. Uh, Hello? Yes. Uh, what determines whether um, x will be uh, less or equal to or just greater, not equal to? So for the, for the one you pick, as it is inside the modulus, it must be greater or equal to because even a zero there is allowed. But we cannot say it is negative and say less or equal to because we are sure that zero is not a negative number. All right. So we pick negative three and seven. These numbers we are picking at the three and seven are the numbers that we find there. We only have seven, seven, negative three, negative three. So you pick one from each set. And then you draw lines here, demarcating. You leave a space for what happens after seven and space for what happens before negative three. And have these lines here move up to there, come down up to here, and move up to there. So this is the modulus of x minus seven. Here, the modulus of x plus three. And this will be f of x. So we'll combine them as we get f of x. Now remember, we have intervals x less than negative three. So this is the interval x less than negative three. Then we have this interval here, negative three less or equal to x less than seven. This is the middle interval here. And after seven, it will be greater or equal to seven. We're looking at each piece here. What is the definition of this function, the modulus of x minus seven, when x is less than three? when x is less than negative three. Now, if you look at x minus seven, it's only talked about in two conditions, x less than seven and x bigger than seven. Now, at least we are sure that if x is less than seven, 
and you are dealing with x that is less than negative three, that very x that is less than negative three, automatically it is less than seven. So if the x is less than negative three, it is true that it is less than seven, meaning that the, the x less than seven satisfies the x less than negative three. If x is already less than negative three, it is true that it will be less than seven. So that in this piece, it's going to be negative x plus seven. Now we also have some space. In between negative three, we still have some numbers between negative three and seven. We still have some numbers that sorry, are less sir. than seven. Yes? Sorry, sir. sorry sir, if I interrupt you. So in this case, where we use the same equations, uh, where you say x less than negative three, would it be wrong where you assume you have a number less than negative three and say negative four, then you put in the equation and just write the signs? Uh -uh, it's not about signs now. It's about the actual functions that we're going to use to substitute that number. All right. Mm -hmm. So in between negative three and seven, we have numbers that are less than seven, satisfying the definition of this very function where x is less than seven. So this modulus x minus seven still remains negative x plus seven for values of x less than seven as per definition here. But after seven, it becomes x minus seven. We go to the second one, the modulus of x plus three. The modulus of x plus three is defined as this if x is less than negative three. Now we are dealing with x less than negative three, so it will be negative x minus three. When x is bigger than negative three, but less than seven, this definition is satisfied. X is bigger than negative three. So it will be X plus three. It remains X plus three, even if X goes beyond seven. Suppose X is nine. It's true that nine is bigger than negative three. So it still remains X plus three. Now we have the pieces depending on the interval. So before you go further, this table, just repeat a bit. Okay. So now your eyes should be, your eyes should be from here, they should be going this side because this one has been simplified in here. So when you are dealing with the intervals, when you are dealing with the intervals negative three, and I mean the, the number negative three and seven, these numbers form the intervals. So I have X values for less than negative three. I have X values for negative three and seven in between there. I also have X values bigger than seven. So, look, in simplest terms, we are saying. We are using such setups here. If a number is negative four, negative four is less than negative three. You don't need even to ask if negative four is less than seven, no. For as long as you are told it is less than negative three, automatically it is less than seven. So that if the interval we are dealing with is from here going this side, you know that in that interval, it is also true that from there up to this side, it will be satisfied when it gets here. 
so that the definition of this function remains that even if x is to be less than negative three, because negative three is less than seven. That's what I have said here, it is negative x plus seven. And then it is two negative x plus seven because x is less than seven there. But for as long as you go beyond seven, the definition of the function changes, becomes x minus seven. The same explanation comes to x plus three in the modulus. It is x plus three if x is bigger than negative three. Now x is bigger than negative three here. It's also bigger than negative three here. But x is less than negative three in this interval. That's why we have given it negative x minus three. So that okay, so that now we can okay, so now we can add our um, function. So you add in each interval, meaning the first interval we are now forming f. So f is going to be, you add negative x plus seven plus negative x minus three. This will be negative two x plus four. So you have negative two x plus four for x less than negative three. We are dealing with this interval here. So we added these ones here. Now we come to this interval, we'll add these ones there. That is negative x plus seven plus x plus three. So negative x plus x, that is zero. Seven plus three, that is 10. If negative three is less or equal to x, less than seven. And then the last ones, you're adding x minus seven plus, um, Oh, what was this now? Well, this was x plus three. Okay, so x plus three, that is two x minus four for x greater or equal to three. Now we have a function that we are able to sketch. So let me write the function this side, f of x, is equal to oh, wait bring can you can sorry, you bring sorry, sorry. back that board so have so i just want to take yes. this yes sir didn't you make a mistake on the last one where you said 2x minus 4 for x greater than or equal to 3. you're not supposed to be greater than or equal to 7. okay yeah you're right you're supposed to get equal to 7. so this guy is supposed to be 7. This one here. This guy. The last number here. So it's supposed to be. Supposed to be. Two X. So it's supposed to be like that two X plus minus four, not seven. Two X minus four. Yes. x minus four. When the you add the two equations. The correction was here, where x is greater equal to seven. So I put three there. Okay, then now this means that in this one, we have negative two x plus four. Then we get 10 here when added and here we got two x minus four, okay. So we have these. So now I wanted to copy this on the other side. That's what I started doing here. So negative two X plus four, negative two X plus four, when X is less or equal to negative three. Now when X is less than negative three, and it gave us 10, when negative three less or equal to X, less than seven, and two X minus four, when x greater equal to seven. We sketch it now. So we have negative three. We also have seven. 
So you start, you get negative three and take in that function there. So f of negative three is going to be negative two, negative three plus four. That is six plus four, which is 10. So we get 10 there. Uh, so we get 10, let me put 10 here. So we have a point here that is open. Then you use negative four to see where the function is going. So what will be f of negative four? A number less than negative three, that is negative two, negative four plus four. That's eight plus four, which is 12. So we have that comma 12, a point here. And then it goes like this. Remember it's open there. It's open because it's not included. Then you got the middle part. It's a constant function. So F of negative three in the middle part gives us 10. So immediately we get 10, we come here and close. Because now we have negative three comma 10. If you use zero, you still get F of negative three. I mean, F of zero is to 10 because zero lies in this interval and any number that lies in this interval in the, uh, when, when you take it there to be giving you a constant 10. So we still get 10, seven, F of seven, if used in that interval, it must give us 10 because a constant function, but we'll open there because it's not included and then draw this line here. Then you got the last function now. The last function, uh, f of seven is two. Sir, I have a question. Okay. Um, here on the last part, here where we have negative three and seven. Why isn't it uh, less than or equal to seven? Why isn't it less than or equal to seven? So it's coming from here. This is just less than seven. By definition of the modular piece of that nature. The equal to is on the greater. That's the reason. So now this is 14 minus four, which is 10. So now we'll come and close here because we've gotten seven comma 10. And then pick a number bigger, let's say eight. What is F of eight? That's two eight minus four. That's 16 minus four. We get 12. So we have a point there. So the graph is going to go uh, this way. So that we the point is where on the graph. So it will go this way. That is the point. It's not even important to label the points. They're just telling me that your sketch will go up now. Now it will go down. Now it's a straight line. And that's a complete sketch of, of this function. So understanding the piecewise helps us to be able to sketch any type of function. Okay, so you're supposed to have physics now. I'm sure you have the links for physics. You can join the links for physics now. See you tomorrow. Good day.